have got to show you this throttle plate. This is amazing. I've seen more expensive engines with less options. There's one going this way. There's one going this way. They've got drilled out to be able to use your standard push throttle, whatever type assembly. That's awesome. That is a selling point in itself. Let the Clone Wars begin. Welcome to the new engine that we're going to be working with this year here on Redneck Computer Geek. I like the information that's on this box. It gives a mounting hole diagram right on the box that confirms that it's a standard smaller pattern of a big block. So I'll include a link for that down below. It includes right here on the shaft exactly what size you need, that it's a quarter inch key. I do find it funny that they admit that they use a torch spark plug so you know that it's as cheap as possible. The other thing interesting is the bore and stroke is a 90 by 66, which is exactly the same as the Predator, the Rado, the Ducar, and the Duramax 420. So the question is, what is this thing? I mean, I highly doubt that Build Hard actually made their own engine. So inevitably, it's something they bought and then put their name on. Other little side note here that I do find interesting is this. Gross weight of 83.33. Ironically, that's exactly the same gross rate that a Rado and a Duramax have when they ship. So what is it? Is it a Ducar, a Rado, a Duramax? Let's break it open. Now, let's pop this box off and see what this looks like inside. So we cut around the bottom. So, they cut corners using the cheaper of the foam, but when you consider this thing is about $40 to $60 cheaper than a Duramax, and probably about $600 cheaper than a GX390, you're going to cut some corners. I cannot get over the color scheme. I think this thing is absolutely beautiful. I don't know why, but I really like it. What do you guys think? Do you like this flashy blue fade thing going on here? I like it. Anyways, by the end of this video, we'll confirm what fits in order to do a stage one kit. That way, I can post some links down below for anybody that finds this video to help them. In a future video, we will rip this thing all the way down to the block and we will confirm what fits for internals, potentially. Now, while we're over here, one thing I did want to point out is it is the upgraded style Honda carburetor that has the screw down throttle assembly, does have a removable idle jet. So we'll make sure that the main jet is a standard Honda jet in just a little bit. Over here on the side cover, I thought this was interesting. It's got an on off written here with some sort of plug. So they must have different configurations for this side cover assembly going on here. On the back side, we'll get to it, but I can see a tie down for a throttle connection on there. So we'll pull this off, we'll pull the exhaust off, and we'll confirm the bolt pattern on both sides of that and where the connection is for a throttle. This is just your standard GX390 style setup with GX390 style starter this assembly here is off of a duramax 440 as you can see it is literally a photocopy and even the bolt pattern here is a photocopy this is exactly the same actually one side note here i did notice is that this starter the motor assembly and this flange are bigger than the Duramax 440 starter assembly. So I don't know what's going on there, but all of the bolt pattern is the same, it looks like. We'll confirm that in a future video. Over here on the back side, we've got your standard bolt up here. But what I noticed is that these are missing on some of the Rados and the Ducar clones. And this is actually on this for the full bolt pattern layout, which might be important for somebody if you're using it on a bolt-on generator assembly, a pump assembly, on farm equipment or something like that that runs a hydraulic pump. 
And if we look in here underneath, it is not a reinforced block, which we'll be able to see better once we get in there. The fun part about dealing with clones is finding the five changes to avoid copyright lawsuit. This one, I think, is probably what this one is for number one for me to find for today. So this has insanely long threads. This is extremely small. It's about the size filter down in here for like a 212 style engine. So it's a full size tank with a very small fill. The other thing is, is I was going to do the whole YouTuber ta-da thing with this lid in order to show you the filter that's inside of here, except for I couldn't. Because somebody routed and zip-tie mounted the vent hose to the side of this thing. So the only way this comes off is to undo this and to roll the whole thing that way. But luckily we've got the exhaust out of the way, so we can do the ta-da! big giant honking air filter. So this is way bigger than the standard GX390 filter, so I'm going to bet that this is the one that like the Duramaxes and the big Ducars have and stuff like that. And the big Rados. We'll get back to the Rado versus Ducar argument later. I do have a reason why I keep bringing it up. On the back side here, we have the exhaust taken off, and if we look at this, this is without question a clone of a GX390. Thus, we have a GX390 sitting right on here, and it is perfectly happy, slides back and forth. I do find it interesting that they have a double-layer metal gasket on here. Don't think I've ever seen a clone with a double-layer metal gasket. But if we pull this off, one thing I did want to show you guys is this is a standard size port, and that is the port there. And yes, the port coming out of here is bigger. So I will include the bigger pipe that I use for the 440s for the dragsters in order to help you guys out there. This throttle assembly... I can't believe this engine is cheaper and comes with more throttle assembly options than other engines. There's one going this way. There's one going this way. It's got all the holes drilled out for your standard lever throttle. That alone is amazing. On top of that, this is a Duramax 440 carburetor. This is their carburetor. As you can see, it is already a big bore carb just like the Duramax one. Now, remember that copyright thing? I think this is probably one of them. It is massive. It is huge. Almost double the thickness of a normal GX390. But that in itself is a sales thing because I can drill that out and put a piece of brake line hose into it, and then I've got a vacuum in order to run a vacuum pump off. So that right there is amazing to me. We popped off the valve cover because a lot of guys like to upgrade their valve springs, even with a stage one kit, just for safety sake. And it does have ginormous valve springs in it. Now, granted, it does use slide caps. You could upgrade those pretty cheaply, but they are massive springs. Now, we know from running the Duramax 440 that with this size spring, we were capable of hitting 5,000, 5,400 RPM with a stage one kit and doing some jets. So I will include the um, big block jet kit that I believe is on Amazon. I will include the NR Racing carburetor that we use on our 440. I get no commission from that. I just happen to like the company. And I will include the exhaust that we use on our Duramax 440s. Now, as it is right now, we're going to bolt this thing back together and we're going to fire it up and see what it sounds like. The length on this dipstick is borderline comical. Holy cow. This airbox setup is just plain janky. It's got this giant hole in this really awkward whatever afterthought gasket thing. This has got to be one of those copyright law avoidance things. Because, like, this thing is oversized massively for no reason. 
in order to be able to fit this really weird shaped box. There we go, all together. Got no gas in it just yet because I just wanted to show you how to hook this up. These are amazing. No boost button, no frills, no nothing. Plus it has an air compressor option built in that I love. Shameless, go buy one of these in the description down below. All you do is you hook up your red to this, you find something for a ground, then you come back around over here and you go start. There we go. So we gotta add some gas and kick it over. But I wanted to show you these directions. This is awesome. Like entire part skew is in here. Unfortunately, I don't see a bearing in there, which I wasn't really expecting, but I figured I would look. The other thing I think is funny, somebody forgot the side cover picture. But what is interesting is that it shows a bearing there, which is this one. And it shows a bearing there in the side cover. So hopefully this has bearings on both ends, but we will figure that out in the next video on this. For now, let's make it run. Teeny tiny fill hole. Not cool. Not my favorite part. Okay, set the start on. We'll put it about a quarter. Well, that's not a good sign. Why did we not like the rabbit? We got. That's in on. That has no resistance at all. That makes me worried. On. Start. It could just be it's really, really cold-blooded. Um, my 440 is extremely cold-blooded. So let's just see if that's what it is. <laughs> Before I die of carbon dioxide poisoning and my favorite booster pack decides to go falling onto the ground, let's talk conclusion on this thing. Is it a clone? Oh yeah. Is it a Rado or is it a Ducar? Well, just about every random piece on it has an R on it. But really, there's two big damning features when it comes to whether it's a Rado or not. First of all, on the side of the block, there is a big giant inscription of R420, which is what Rado classifies this style. Secondly, in both the Amazon listing and in the listing on Built Hard's own website, this is called an R420 in the SKU. It's a Rado. At the end of the day, that's what it is. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments section down below. Also, I gotta figure out what in the hell I'm gonna put the thing in. I haven't quite decided yet. I've got a few things I've been kicking around, but if you're a subscriber to the channel and you've seen a certain build that needs an upgrade or maybe a better idea for an engine, let me know. Maybe I'll throw this in.